studio etiquette. No food or drinks, nowhere near the gear. Don't put no headphones on the mic stand. Yo, man, I know I'm a little bit late. We're going to start the clock now, though. <laughs> your clock starts at the time you book, not the time you get here. Hey, man, the recording studio can be a great place to express yourself and be free. But with great freedom comes great responsibility. Here's my tips on studio etiquette. What's up audio engineers, artists, producers, anybody who's ever visited a studio or is thinking about visiting a studio. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com and this video is going to be your guide to studio etiquette. <laughs> You're going to make sure you don't get kicked out of your next session, all right? All right, y'all. So the first tip that I want to give y'all when it comes to studio etiquette, obviously to make the most out of your time, you need to be on time, arrive on time. When it comes to recording studios, on time is actually late. I suggest that you show up about 15 minutes early to your recording session, depending on what you're going to do. So that's 15 minutes if you're planning on recording vocals. But if you're a full band and y'all need to set up drums and amps and other things like that, you might want to talk with your engineer and consider arriving even earlier, maybe an hour early or even more. So talk with the engineer, find out what's an acceptable window for your arrival so that you get there early and you're actually ready to start recording at the time you booked, not start setting up, okay? So studio etiquette rule number one, arrive on time. And if you're on time, you're late. My next tip is a tip that I rarely hear anyone talking about. Nobody mentions this and I really wonder why. Do they not know? Are they just not trying to tell y'all this? But this is mainly for my artists out here. Artists, please bring your own hard drives to the session. Not just a little flash drive with your beat. You need a external hard drive that you can start to save all of your sessions on once the session is complete or even work off of altogether, okay? Major label artists, they always arrive at a studio with their own drives and they have their music loaded on there and they record to their drives, mix from their drives, and once the session is done, they unplug those drives and take it with them. Your recordings are your property. You own it. If you pay for the session, this is now something, this is your tangible property now that you get to walk away with. If you just leave that session in the responsibility of the engineer, who knows if you're going to be able to recover it in the future. You may have a time where the engineer is in computer crashes or he loses the files or deletes them. Honestly, it may not be their responsibility to hold on and protect and preserve your recording. So for all of my artists out there, if you're booking a session first, go to your local computer store and pick up an external hard drive. I definitely recommend nowadays using an SSD drive if you're going to be working off of it because they'll be fast enough to actually record and write to as you are um, in your studio session. And when you're done, you can just eject that drive, leave, and you have everything that you need in your possession. That means that if you need to go to another studio to have someone mix it, you don't have to go calling around, hey engineer, you got my session I did 18,000 months ago, um, and expect them to have it, okay? So possess and own your own recordings. Make sure that you show up to your session with an external drive. My next tip, <laughs> It's gonna be for all of my artists to make sure that you are at least familiar with your song. Okay, if you're coming to the studio, the studio is a place to, you know, it is a place to be uh, creative, but if you don't have the time and the money that it's going to cost you to sit there and write a song or sit there and, and do 500 takes of the same line and, and rewrite and all of that. Now, some artists have the budget for that and they like to create in the studio, but if you want to maximize the efficiency of your studio session, I highly recommend that you actually Spend the time to rehearse your delivery. Maybe even set up a small production studio in your home and, and practice how you want to come across. What voice do you want to use? What notes do you want to sing? What's the melody that you want to impart? When are you going to take your breaths during this certain section, okay? 
that is so important and key to coming to the studio and doing your best work is actually having some proper planning in advance. Then you know, they always say proper planning prevents piss poor performance. So if you can take the time out to ready yourself, familiarize yourself with your song, your lyrics, with the music that you want to use, it's gonna make for a much better experience in the studio. You'll be able to accomplish a lot more and leave with something that you actually can be proud of, right? On the other hand, you might just wanna to go to the studio to create and listen to beats and write, and that's all good too. Just know your goal and know that if your goal is to leave with a song recorded, that you might want to actually practice and rehearse that song before you get to the studio. So the next tip here is going to be for the artist to send any files that you may need to use in your session, send them in advance, okay? Now, don't try to show up to your session and ask the engineer to start downloading beats off YouTube. Yes, they might accommodate you, but they really don't have to, and that's like piracy. If you're going to be doing piracy and stealing beats offline, you need to do that on your own. Please don't come to a session and ask me to do that. I much rather you already have your materials that you want to use and send them to me in advance. And the reason I would like you to send them to me in advance and not just pop up with a flash drive is because I want to be ready when you arrive. I want to make sure that I troubleshoot any problems with your files, organize them, get the session uploaded, check the levels, everything, so that once the downtime starts for the session that you've booked, I'll be ready and you can just walk right in and start recording and again, maximize the time that we have together. Here's one that may seem a little obvious or not, but depending on the studio that you're in, no food or drinks in the studio. You probably saw me on, on Instagram or TikTok with this. Hey, this mix coming out fire. You trying to put precipitation on my Pro Tools? Trying to drip water on my Loop Trotter? You might get some H2O on my LA-2A. No food or drinks anywhere near the gear. For one, foods create smells, okay? Smells can be unpleasant. And if I have to be locked into a room with you for hours, um, you know, that's just not conducive. You eating this whole onion sandwich and you, you know, drinking this whatever it is that may spill on my gear. So there's many reasons for not allowing food or drinks in the studio actually in the studio room. There might be an actual lounge where you can go and have a snack or a beverage, but check with the engineer and see if they are comfortable with you having food and drinks, man. I've had people pull up to the studio with Chinese takeout boxes and just start eating, you know, as and I'm like, what the hell is that smell? And then I realized, okay, somebody's in the back eating some egg foo young or something. I'm like, dude, this ain't the place for that, okay? You gotta take your child fun to the lobby or something, please, all right? I can't even concentrate no more. So um, we want to keep the studio environment neutral. And, and that goes for um, food and drinks. You know, talk with your engineer uh, to make sure that they're comfortable with you bringing any food or drinks in the studio. And if you have to have a snack, get like a little granola bar or something that doesn't, is not going to impede on anyone else's comfort during the time that we are together. This next tip is probably one of my biggest pet peeves and all the artists, anybody's booking a studio should definitely take heed to this. Never talk louder than the speakers are, okay? That means if I turn my speaker level down to monitor and do some critical listening, that's not a cue for you to just start talking louder, that's a cue for you to be quiet, right? You always want to respect the engineer. Remember that you're paying them to do a service for you and you need to allow them the space and the environment to get that done. A lot of times you're coming in with your entourage and you, they're holding conversations and laughing and joking and uh, scrolling. Oh my God, the worst thing you could be doing is scrolling on your phone and got these reels playing out loud uh, while somebody is trying to mix. I'm like, dude, that's just completely, um, you're just being completely oblivious to the point that we're here in the studio of what we're here to do. So never, just a, a group rule is to never be louder than the speakers, all right? Don't ever be louder than the speakers. If, you're, if your engineer turns the speakers down to do a quiet listening passage, you need to be quiet. Either start whispering or stop talking 
all together, all right? It's super important that we can listen critically as audio engineers and we need your silence. Now to piggyback on that, let's just go to the phone thing, okay, address that right away. Everybody's on their phones nowadays, I get it. You get bored, we, we're addicted to scrolling Instagram and TikTok. You just can't go 10 minutes without looking at that phone. I understand, okay, I'm one of them. Matter of fact, where is my phone? Anyway, right? <laughs> Make sure that you keep your phone on silent or use some earbuds if you need to listen to something um, that's coming from your phone. It's one of the most disrespectful things you could be doing is playing some YouTube video or some TikTok in the background and trying to show everybody with the volume up on the phone as we're recording or mixing in the studio. Like, I mean, this should really go without being said, but I have to say it because it happens and it continues to happen. And I know that as we get more and more integrated with these phones and these social medias, it's only gonna be more prevalent, prevalent for a lot more of us. So keep that in mind, keep your phone on silent. Don't have anything planned from the phone or computer or any other sources. And if you gotta have a phone call, step out. Keep your ringers on silent. Matter of fact, if you're the artist, I suggest that you put your phone in airplane mode. Some radio frequencies from the phones can cause interference in your recording. So if you ever heard the little these little pops and beeps and digital sounds that are coming, you you are actually causing some interference depending on the type of mic and the gear, all that electricity, you could be causing noise in the studio just by having your phone on. If somebody's calling you, it's just sending and receiving signals the whole time. So when you walk into that booth, Flip that phone to airplane mode and, uh, and you'll have a better experience. Don't touch anything that isn't yours in the studio. That goes for instruments that you may see sitting around. That goes for microphones, headphones, gear. If you didn't bring it with you, don't touch it without permission. And this can go to the smallest thing, okay? Please, one of the biggest things is obviously the microphone. A lot of artists like to go into the booth and start adjusting the microphone. That is not your job. That's the job of the engineer. And they're there to provide a service for you so they shouldn't have any problem with getting up off their butt, going into the, uh, the booth with you and making sure that the microphone is adjusted perfectly for you to use. You should not be adjusting the microphone as an artist. You shouldn't be touching any gear, any instruments that don't belong to you. Keep your hands to yourself. Uh, just don't touch anything. Don't move anything. Don't rearrange anything. Ask for permission, okay? Thank you. Respect the gear. And then following that up, respect the engineer. All right? This next tip is so huge. Please, respect your engineer. Yes, they're there to provide a service for you. And a lot of times the engineer might be, you know, a little, you know, nerdy looking or geeky looking, or you might not think they're hip, right? But regardless of that, you need to show them some respect. I've been in a lot of studios where, you know, the rappers or whatever, they think they cool and they think they can just talk to the engineer any kind of way. That's not the way that you want to treat somebody who is handling your soul. And ultimately, as engineers, that's what we're doing. We're handling the soul. When you pour your, your soul out into that microphone, we're handling that. We're in control. Let's have a respectful relationship between each other. Let's talk to each other with kindness. And that, in return, is going to just help that engineer to care even more about your project. If you're just coming in being an asshole, um, that's not going to get you anywhere, okay? So show some respect to the engineer. Um, be polite. Understand that they are an expert in what they are doing. They are a professional in what they are doing. And if they're not, then why are you working with them, right? If, they're, if, if you have to tell them every single thing and it's getting to a point to where you have to get disrespectful, cancel the session, leave, don't book again, do whatever. But if you decide to work with somebody, please, Show them some respect. All right, y'all, so <laughs> I've just went on a rant, but those are some of the studio etiquette things that I think are just so important and they often go overlooked. We talk a lot on this channel about recording and mixing techniques, but these simple human techniques on how to behave in the studio will help your studio sessions go a whole lot further. If you're an artist and you're seeing this, I hope that you got a lot out of it. Share it with your artist friends. If you're an engineer and you're watching this, please share this with your clients. It's gonna help you both to have an understanding of what the expectations are during the studio session.
I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. If you'd like to learn more about how to record and mix better and faster, visit our website, wavywayne.com, all right? Y'all be dope. Thank you.